quit and we're live. So, uh, hi everybody, and thank you for joining us. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, introducing the speaker today. Uh, Trish is uh, actually a client of mine, and since last year actually, and uh, I really enjoy working with her. She's a total fun person to be with, and uh, also very serious about her work. And she she interestingly gets whatever I explain to her. So it's 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 a real joy to work with her. Uh, Trish is a work life inclusion coach. And I'm going to ask her what inclusion means, actually, because I've heard of work life coaches, but I still want to know what is work life inclusion coach. Uh, she's also an author, trainer, and motivational speaker. Uh, she is trained in uh, adult education, uh, sport counseling, self advocacy, social action, and life skills. Uh, she's been providing life and coaching, counseling, and consulting to entrepreneurs for over a couple of decades now. And um, she is a tech junkie at heart, which is why I find her an amazing client, by the way. Uh, she's very passionate about helping her clients automate their business processes so they can actually conserve energy and save them from being overwhelmed that comes from being an entrepreneur. So her final goal is to make sure they earn what they're worth. So let's get started. Uh, hi, Trish, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it, Rishi. It's been a pleasure working with you as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. So finally, you're here, and uh, let's let's start with the first question, which is, uh, you know, I when I read the word work life inclusion coach, maybe you want to expand. Because that's something that's, you know, not used commonly. And I actually even googled it. I said. Is there such a title? <laughs> so, so what is? Uh, did you find mean? anything? Did I at least come up? <laughs> yes, you did. You were on on the on the first, and like, oh, it's right there, Trish. She's the only one that's using it. So this is her <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So why Very did you talk with the word inclusion? And what I can Very good. Interesting. Well, I um, I'm a, I'm a woman with a disability, and so the word inclusion often comes from you know the diversity field. Um, but it really means the same thing for me, okay? So inclusion in terms of diversity, and, uh, and I'm definitely all about disability inclusion, um, is about including people. It's about planning for the needs of everyone. Literally, that's what it means, okay? Planning for the needs of everyone. And in terms of wife work-life inclusion coach, why I chose that particular name is because I want people to know that it is completely possible to plan your work and life to include each other. Um, often people get hung up on work-life balance, okay? But the problem is uh, balance is different for everyone. And, and it's different for me today as it might be tomorrow or next week or next year. Um, but inclusion is really, it's just like a welcoming of both. So, you know, it would be work-life inclusion means, you know, your healthiest, your healthiest blend of the two. Wow, that's really nice. I knew something like that was going to come in, but I thought, you know, might as well talk about it right here and I'll hear it for the first time from you. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Thank you. <laughs> so tell us about your journey and, and how you became a coach. You know? And you can start from the day you were born, but I leave that up to you. <laughs> well, I think we'll do a little fast forward from birth <laughs> and we'll start 1993. I, uh, I woke up one day and it was just a... It, it, it actually you start with my it, this was my 30th birthday my husband threw a big party for me and he proposed to me on on my 30th birthday got down on one knee even got up and sang me an Elvis song afterwards it was awesome um and we had fireworks that night and I remember that night when I was looking up at the fireworks there was a like a spark of ash that came off the fireworks and landed on one of my on my glasses on one of my lenses. This is a true story. And you know what? I've never told anybody this before. Um, and I remember that distinctly. Okay. But it was a great night. No big deal. I needed to get my glasses fixed. All right. But two days later, I woke up in such extreme pain behind that eye 
that I had to go to emergency. All right. Well, the, right from Emerge, the I was benefit, benefited to, to know for, for the, the fact that um, there was an uh, ophthalmologist working on Emerge and Emerge that night, and um, he said, "I think there's something neurological going on, and I need to see you in my office." So I, anyways, um, it took another. Uh, it turns out I had optic neuritis, and it was just a swelling of the optic nerve. And um, another nine months before I got a diagnosis, MS, you, at, back in the 90s, MS had to be diagnosed in three stages. And uh, I got the first stage after nine months, first stage diagnosis. And um, yeah, my employer didn't believe me, okay? Um, and I had lost quite a bit of time, uh, sick leave, by the time I was diagnosed. And within three months after I was diagnosed, they let me go. Um, and I was a fighter and still am a fighter. So yeah, I took them to the Canadian Human Rights Commission. And about two years later, it was settled in my favor. Um, yay! And my husband and I, wow, we actually had enough money to down payment on a house, you know, and uh, <laughs> which was amazing, you know. Um, so that was amazing. You know, there's a lot of positive spins in my life from disability, I have to tell you. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, so that was uh, goodness gracious. Wow, that was a whirlwind uh, from 93 to 94. Um, wow, a journey to a coach. Well, this is a little ways down the road, but there's just, I want to share some traumas, okay? Um, that, that year, not only was, okay, I was diagnosed in 93, in the late 93, November 93, and then in um, February of 94, that was when I lost my job. And then in May of 94, my daughter landed on our doorstep because she had to stay in Toronto with her pregnancy because her child had her infant, her newborn baby, too soon to be born baby, had a heart defect. And um, um, wow, she gave me the gift of life by sharing that experience with me. Um, and uh, we lost. Chris in the end. Um, he was born, he had his surgery, and then a couple hours afterwards he, he passed. Um, wow, that was just, and, and this is a roller coaster of my life, I'm telling you. Okay, no kidding, just weeks after we lost Christopher, my husband and I were married. Okay, we had been, we had been planning the wedding for like over a year, um, but just so happened to, yeah, what a roller coaster. Anyway, I'm the only bride in history that's worn her dress, wedding dress three times. I had three receptions. Anyway, all over the country. Anyways, um, the roller coaster of my life continued. And, but the first eight years of my MS, I was really sick. Um, I went from two to three relapses a year for eight years until finally in 2001, I, 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 I came to a, um, a, a plateau and, and the relapses stopped. And um, it was very much attributable to having made some significant lifestyle changes in my life. I quit smoking, I started drinking, you know, having water as my primary beverage, and um, I started working out, you know, and, and things stabilized and I started doing really well. But all the time I had been not working and I was volunteering. And that was when I got that training that you mentioned in support counseling. And so I had been ultimately coaching people as a volunteer. And at that point, I was 30 hours a week I was volunteering. And then I decided I had a, had a year or more of remission under my belt. I decided I wanted to go back to work. And um, yeah, so I knew that I was already, I wanted to continue to be there for people, you know, I was really enjoying the volunteering, but I found out that life coaching was a career I could actually get paid for talking to people on the phone. <laughs> and so I had to do that. 
Um, so we did, I did, and uh, went back to school, got my certification and um, hung up my shingle on April 1st of 2003. Yeah, it had to be April 1st, you know, just because I'm a bit of a joker. Yeah. Um, but it was, uh, it's been a whirlwind. It's been a whirlwind. I started out life coaching, uh, which very quickly evolved into business coaching because I've been a tech junkie since uh, I bought my first computer in 1982. Yeah, somewhere back there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, I've had, put it this way, for those who followed the uh, development of the technology, I, my first computer was an, one is an XT, okay, which was one of the first PCs, it's, I think it was either, I think it was number two in the model line, yeah, um, anyways, um, so yeah, so I, I'm from way back, I'm a junkie, it, I, I've, the one, was it the one that has the green screen with a, a colon and a thing flashing over there. Dos, absolutely, dos of, absolutely. C, <laughs> the C, yeah, they'll tell you you're on your hard drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the home, the root directory. Yes. And you do D I R and then you see what you could see that, right? What's in the files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Way back that. DOS. Yeah. I once. I, I remember once going to uh, somebody's house at a computer and I had no idea what computers are. This was more like in the 1989-90 and I saw this guy just type DIR and CLS really fast multiple times and I, was, I just kept this seeing the screen go by and I'm like wow I got to learn this thing I don't know what he's doing but it seems to be totally awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. you got the fever about the same time I got the fever. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, it was totally transformative in my life, computers. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so I've had a lot of fun with computers. And um, yeah, so it evolved. My, my life coaching ended up within a couple of years, um, most of my clients um, were uh, entrepreneurs. Right. Um, and in the beginning, most of my clients were people with disabilities, right? Because I targeted people with disabilities because I'm a woman with disability, right? Um, just as an FYI, it's not just the MS, I also have a major heart disease. Um, and uh, uh, I also have bipolar disorder and the hesitation wasn't about the bipolar. It was whether I was going to show you my, uh, my heart, my open heart surgery scar there or not. Yeah. 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 But anyways, um, I decided not to, didn't know what time of day this was showing all over the world. Anyways, <laughs> anyways um, yeah, so we went from I went from life coaching to business coaching to working with entrepreneurs, um, but then eventually I had a lot of fun because I got involved in corporate, um, doing disability awareness training, and then it was disability legislation training. When here in Canada, in Ontario, they they created a legislation called Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities. So I at, for, there was a couple of years in like 2007, 2008, 2009 there. I, I, me and a team of facilitators, we traveled around Ontario and we covered off like 35 to 40 different municipalities. Um, we were training municipal employees on the legislation and how to provide customer service to people with disabilities. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. We had a blast. Yeah, on the road, a bunch of girls in a van on the road. It was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was one of the things that uh, I don't know whether it's a good idea to mention this or not, but you had also written to me a lot of things about your background. And I was thinking you had this thing about some suicide attempt or something. What was that all about? Oh, my God. Yeah, that was in. OK, I go back to the 93, 94 that in that segment. OK, it was about two years after. Yeah. And, and you may have read that because I do workshops on mental health and I talk very openly about my suicide attempt. Um, the um, and it was it, it, it's it's. Now I can see the re like what happened for number one, um, when you have mental illness, uh, it's very common for you to be it on the meds and then decide after a few months you're feeling better because of the meds, but then you decide you don't need the meds anymore because you're feeling better. 
So you go off the meds and then you're fine for months and months. And then all of a sudden you have a crash and you got to get back on anyways. So non-compliance of medication, certainly at least here in North America, well, we're the biggest pharmaceutical users on the planet, I'm sure. Um, but when you have mental illness, it's very, very common to be non-compliant with medication. And I was diagnosed with uh, mental illness when I was 22 years old, and it took me eight years until I was 30 years old before I finally became compliant with medication. And that only happened because of my suicide attempt. Yeah, it was two years after we got married and we were having a really rocky night with having an argument. We were both drinking. Um, we we're also using other substances and he stormed out the door and I took a handful of pills and um, managed to drag myself to the bathroom when I realized that I was getting tired and I was about to pass out in bed. And then I decided I didn't want to die. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I had already swallowed the pills. I uh, got into the bathroom. Um, I, I recall trying to throw up. I don't remember whether I did or not, but I do remember a husband found me and he stuck his finger. I told him what happened and he, he threw, made me throw up. And uh, yeah. I didn't go to the hospital, uh, but it was the scariest shit. But the wildest thing is um, he was so frustrated by the argument and the situation that while well, he went left the house, he was out there contemplating how that he could do the same. And by the grace of God that we came back together that night. And um, yeah, and both of us also, both of us have mental, mental illness, mental health. He lives with major anxiety disorder and, and me, I, well, now it, I diagnose clearly now as bipolar, but back then I was diagnosed with ma uh, just major depressive disorder. But um, yeah, it's, it's scary. So when I do talks on mental illness, honest to God, Rishi, my biggest message is say something, talk to somebody, don't ignore it because you know what? depression can be fatal that's my message there so thank you for bringing that up i appreciate that excuse yeah. me while i spray <laughs> okay. too much zoom too much, too much zoom <laughs> <laughs> so uh tell me uh what's this wave effect because that's what we decided to talk about so talk to us a little bit yeah. about the wave effect What's that? Okay, well, the wave effect, the wave effect is a program that I've developed. It's a, um, it's a group coaching program. Uh, could also be one on one later on, but um, we're going to be launching the wave effect probably over the summer. I don't know if I'm going to get uptake over the summer, we shall see if worst case scenario, it'll be in September. Um, so if anybody's interested as you're listening, keep in mind, just get in touch with me before then and I'll give you contact information at the end. Um, and I'll put you on a waiting list, okay? Um, the Wave Effect is a program for entrepreneurs who either have trouble with their health, they have a disability, or maybe they're just plain stressed right out, okay? Um, Lord only knows that, uh, Lord knows that um, the, the stress level that people have been living under in this pandemic, especially business owners, especially, most especially small business owners, um, have had really, really struggled. Um, and so I have developed a program to help uplift them. Okay. And that's exactly what the wave effect, the wave effect does. And, and the principle just is basically that, um, that, you know, we can, when we take one action, um, it creates a wave to affect other activities and actions. Okay. Um, ultimately boil it down to this. There are three biggest pains that business owners are having right now. Number one, limited energy. Number two, they're in business overwhelm. And number three, they're having fear and self-doubt because of the first two, okay? 
Well, the solutions that I've come up with, number one is well-being. We have to look after our well-being. That's the W in WAVE. The second piece is we need to integrate automation into our lives, okay? Not just computer. Is and, 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 and automation is about way more than technology, just like well-being is about way more than self-care and physical health. OK, and and that leads to the nine secrets. OK, but then the V in wave that stands for vision. OK, and the vision isn't have anything to do with how well you see through those glasses you're wearing. OK, there's a, your life is about so much more. And and if you don't have vision, uh, you you just we, we go in circles. We go wherever the wind takes us. Yeah. So anyways, the, so that's, we can, uh, there are nine secrets. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of them here because they are secrets. I don't want to reveal them all, don't you know, Rishi? Um, but let's tell it, for example, automation. Um, automation, clearly the first thing one comes to mind is technology. All right. And we, there are so many ways that we can set up automation and technology that most the average user, the average small business user or the business owner, they really, most people don't have a clue, right? Wouldn't you agree with that, Rishi? Most yeah. small business owners, they, they really don't understand the capacity, right? That we have now in technology available to us, right? Um, and then the second piece under automation that people don't think about um, is delegation. Now I know automation, it, it denotes, you know, automatic as in no persons involved. Well, I kind of reframe automation as in no business owner involvement, no entrepreneurial involvement, okay? So delegation to me falls under automation. OK, so and many, many people have difficulty with automation or excuse me, with delegation. So that's a piece we address seriously. OK, and then finally, there's a third piece under automation, which is systems. OK, and the systems are everything. You know, whenever there's whenever there's anything that I do more than five times a week, I have to have a system for it. OK, yeah. because there, you know, one, once there's a system in place, um, everything goes smoother and faster. And your best example of that is McDonald's, okay? They figured out the fastest and most efficient and cleanest and healthiest and, and most best looking how to produce that product in the fastest, best way, right? And they said through systems, it's even though, even though automation, there's still have staff in there, but it's a system that the owners, the franchise owners, they don't have to be hands on, right? This is an automatic system. It's a system that, that sets up a process. And, and even though McDonald's is way outside of most people's concept of, of setting up a business, um, right down to nuts and bolts on the kitchen table and with a laptop. There are systems. I remember when I first started my business and I was working from the couch with my laptop. And I still remember a day I have, um, I call them emotional snapshots. Okay. And those are what I call memories that I have, there, there was a feeling behind it. Okay. And I have, still have an emotional snapshot of that day where I was sitting there and I'm thinking, oh man, do I have to write the same bloody email all over again? I just wrote this one yesterday to another prospect, you know? And then three days later it was, oh my God, what am I gonna do about this, you know? And then, then, it only then that I decided, you know what, there's a better way. <laughs> there's gotta be a better way. Cause you know, where most people see roadblocks, I see speed bumps. And I'm a, I'm a Giver kind of gal, I call myself, because I'm all about finding a better way, way to build a better mousetrap, so to speak, right? And to me, there's never a roadblock. It's always about finding ways around, you know? There's always another way. I love that about computers, don't you? There's always more than one way to do something, right? And even if there's, even when you run into a roadblock, then there's workarounds, <laughs> you know, after that, so... And then there's uh, and then there's Zapier, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which fixes everything. <laughs> good, good. Anyways, yeah. So I think that's that's one of the reasons I think for me, 
you know, because I have the, the, this automation solution, which I talk to uh, customers, uh, especially when they're on LinkedIn and stuff. And I remember when I spoke to you about it, you just got it, you know, you said, yeah, Rishi, I got it, let's get started. And I'm like, wow, I didn't have to do anything because not, now I know why. <laughs> now I know why you can just sense and detect that this is going to speed up my, my work and get me more efficient to the point where you said, Rishi, it's going way too fast. <laughs> we have to yes, yes. <laughs> Actually, can can we take a minute and talk about that process? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I, I have to say, okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little peek in in behind the curtain, okay, for people. All right, so Rishi did a search for me looking for coaches, all right, on LinkedIn. And he came up with, I think it was 1500 coaches we st we started with on LinkedIn. And from those 1500 coaches, we sent connection requests. And of course, my note out to them was I'm a person, I'm an entrepreneur with a disability. How about you? Because I was looking for other entrepreneurs with disabilities. And out of those 1500 people um, he approached for me, 800 of them accepted my connection request. I find we found that staggering, didn't we? I, yeah. I was I was blown away, like way more than 50%. Yeah. And then out of the 800, 200 of them actually direct messaged me. Okay. Yeah. So I, 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 we had direct engagement with 200 out of 1500 like i have yet to put those numbers into a graph chart of some kind um because i don't know what the percentages are i mean be, you know as a result i don't know what the percentages are um but i think those are staggering numbers and then out of the 200 that direct messaged me we of course responded to every single one of them and we offered them the opportunity to participate in a survey for entrepreneurs with disabilities out of the 200 i ended up with a list of 28 and maybe it was 30 okay uh people who are my exact target market Wow. And that was completely automated for me. I didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> I, so I now have a small database. And so, at, you know, at that point it was like, okay, because that was 200 messages on LinkedIn to reply to, I had to say, okay, that's enough for now. <laughs> and we had to put it on hold for a month while I built the new infrastructure in my business, my manpower to be able to handle the, uh, the new influx. And so, yeah, I was happy to announce to Rishi that I uh, took on a new apprentice um, who, uh, a, a gentleman by the name of Kamal, he's awesome. And he's awesome at social media, by the way. If anybody's interested in connecting with Kamal, you do that through me. Um, anyways, um, yeah, so he is responding to my messages. And um, yeah, so, and, and this is, that leads to the, another piece of the automation and the delegation, okay? Again, talking about automation, um, how I delegate when, um, you know, I keep uh, I keep a lean a lean ship. So um, I use apprentices. I build I build a virtual team. I I have built a virtual team of apprentices over year, over the years. Of course, the apprentices have changed over time, um, but often the apprentices, when they're done their apprenticeship. Um, they actually hang out and stay on with me. Yeah, because we love each other so much. Yeah, I love team building and my team is awesome. And um, yeah, and uh, I build apprentices through a platform called Acadium. And um, I welcome you to check out Acadium. Um, but if, you, it, it, uh, if you'd like $100 off their fee, I encourage you to go to Acadium 100, the number 100, 100, and the word off. So that's Acadium 100 off. Dot com, and that will be my gift to you um, as, a, as a new subscriber to Acadium for watching my interview today. You'll get $100 off that. Um, yeah, like so send me that link uh, so that I can then email it to everybody in case they didn't get it. We can do that awesome. after. Yeah, I'll do, yes, I'll do that for sure. For sure. Yeah, and probably a couple other links I'll give you too. Um, so, yeah, so this is how I run the ship with. Um, 
with um, apprentices and I don't pay them. I just exchange services with them. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I, traditional apprenticeship relationship, you don't exchange services, you're just sort of mentoring someone, okay? But in, in at my, you know, in changing paces, what it, what, how it works out to is that um, I'm teaching them to do work for me in the exact field that they want to learn. Mm -hmm. So for example, I take on an apprentice who's interested in learning to manage WordPress. So I teach them how to build a WordPress website by building one for one of my clients. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so so it's a win, win, win all the way around. So this, you know, this apprentice learns WordPress, I get the help I need, the client gets the website they need, and everybody's happy. Yeah, it's a real holistic approach to business management. Fabulous. Yeah. I'd like to now um, switch gears into a couple of questions, which maybe you've already responded to, but uh, you've spoken about the wave effect. You've also shared a little bit about the secrets. But if the people who are watching this recording right now, I mean, watching this right now live with us or a recording later, if I were to ask you, what are the kinds of services that you offer your clients and how they benefit, how would you respond to that? so that people can just get a crystal clear, okay, this is what she does, this is what she offers uh, to her clients, and, and this is the benefit. So in case they're interested, you know, they know how they, to get in touch with you. Okay, well, let's start with services. Um, as I said, I'm launching a group coaching program in the fall, all right? And I am taking uh, names for a waiting list, all right? It's going to be reasonable. Um, but you're going to walk away with a whole new idea about how to approach business and keeping it sustainable. All right. Um, that's the biggest piece that you're going to walk away with the benefit you're going to get, you're going to get sustainability. That's right. Because if you're looking after yourself and you're looking after your, your business and you're keeping an eye on the prize at the end of the goal, at the end of the road, then all's well. That's what you're going to get sustainability. So I'm going to teach you how to manage uh, the inclusion of your life and your work. Okay, that's exactly what comes of it. Um, so that's a huge benefit that they're going to get from that program. Um, I'm also um, over the summer, probably mid July, I'm going to be doing a virtual retreat. And it's going to be on the same topic. Um, but it's, you know, it's not going to be as heavy as the, uh, the, group the group program in the fall. Um, so it's going to be sort of an introduction to uh, the wave effect. All right. Um, and, um, and then the benefits from that will be certainly going to be at least some new perspectives. Okay. It's going to be some, so, uh, some, some, perhaps some um, opportunity for, um, growth in terms of how we perceive our potential for influence on our lives, okay? Um, and on our business, often, you know, we feel powerless under, like, you know, especially right now in the pan, middle of a pandemic, um, it's just so easy to feel powerless because hell we are, okay? Um, but, we have to step away from that. You know, we have to, we have to focus on the things we can control, you know, and in spite of, you know, the economic climate, uh, we do still have some impact on our financial potential, you know? So, you know, the smartest people during the early part of the pandemic, they dove into education. They dove into retraining their people there. They dove into uh, um, taking some new classes or courses or, or, or doing some uh, self-reflection, you know, making good use of the time, you know? Um, yeah, so that is, so, so yeah, so the retreat will be about that. We'll be stopping and taking stock in our businesses and, and our value sets to make sure that our value sets are in alignment with what we're doing with our services or our products, okay? And making sure that they, they blend well and they support us with, you know, like, you know, to support us for sustainability. <clears throat> and I spell sustainability with a capital A for ability, okay? 
always. Sustainability, profitability, the capital A, same thing, same thing. Um, yeah, and, uh, and then the other piece in terms of services, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, business coaching, as well as life coaching. Um, benefits, I would say, biggest benefit you get out of coaching is um, direction. Um, and a guide, like somebody to walk you through. I I'm not there. I don't have a map. All right. So when you come to me, you, what happens is you give me, you give me information about everything that's going on in your life and your business. We kind of map it out. Literally, we will draw out a mind map. OK, and so that you can get a visual perspective of what's going on in your life and your business. All right. The benefits from that are priceless. It's like stepping out of a tornado and into the eye okay, of the tornado. All right. And being able to see what's going on. Right. Instead of being in the middle of the whirlwind. OK. Um, yeah. Huge, huge benefit. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps yes. Uh, yes. people know, you know, we've got just to recap, we're talking about uh, the program in the fall, um, the group program, and then we've got the retreat over the summer. And then I also have one on one coaching. And anybody that wants to get on the waiting list for either the retreat or the, uh, the group program, please. Yeah, my uh, I'm I'm Trish at changing paces dot com. Yes. Um, but we'll go over that at the end. too, I and And I'm Yes, I'll be pasting will include it. it. Include it in the email to everybody that's registered as well. Thank you, Rishi. Great. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay, next question. Um, uh, can you tell us some of the, uh, I don't know, stories, if you'd like to call that, uh, with the clients that you've already helped in the past? And, mm. you know, maybe just so that people get a better idea if, in a story form, like, you know, this is what the guy was facing yeah. problems with and how you helped him out. Wow, let me see. Um, I'm going to use random names. Okay. Um, let's say, um, yeah, I have I have a call. I have a client literally um, by the name of uh, Bob. Let's call him Bob. And uh, Bob, Bob is really really good at what he does. Um, he's ultimate a salesman. OK, he's ultimately he's all about the people connection. He's all about the building the relationship and making sure every need for that client is seen to. Um, but um, his contact information he keeps on his clients are on physical cards that he keeps in a, in a file in these they look like magazine racks paperback files and he must have like eight or 10 or 12 of them. Okay. And, but there's certain ones that he has a whole bunch of them pulled that are like his recent ones he's working on. Like that would be the one he carries in his car with him wherever he goes, but he does have a, a, a manual, like a digital device. Um, so when we first met Bob, or I should say started working with him, he, um, those cards are just a representation of his systems. Okay. Um, I, I've never been to his office, but I have no doubt there's probably stacks of paper here and there and whatnot. Um, but the bottom line was um, he had, he had two different websites on two different platforms. Um, and then he was launching a third on a third different platform and different branding on each and anyways a uh, long and short of it is um he gave me six months and i helped him um bring well, those websites uh, <laughs> together i helped him set up a you know an email blasting system so that he could communicate with his list so all of the names that are on those cards were actually now in a database and they're actually hearing from him once a week now and um yeah and this is this is all practical stuff right but it's really the strategy it's the strategy at the high end that i do right and 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 all those practical little things 
are things that can be delegated to an apprentice, okay? And so, yeah, I'm in the process of trying to convince him to get an apprentice, right? Um, but then I have another client who, who is in the same, who is in the same, not same situation. And eh, she's a little more advanced. We'll call her, uh, we'll call her Sally. Um, and um, but she has big pieces in her business, but they're all kind of disconnected. All right. And 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 so she really needs somebody to come in and connect those pieces and get the systems going that she knew there were systems behind them. Right. So she bought into this and she bought into this, but she didn't know how to piece them all together. Um, and so that's a piece that that I, I've done for clients. Um, and so when, when you, when you um, think of things like very organically and very um, holistically, all right, that's how I approach life, all right? I believe we're all connected. I believe, and I, you know, I don't want to get religious on your show. This is not religious, but I believe that we all pray to the same entity, okay? I, I truly believe. Um, I it's, uh, I think that we're all one with the earth, you know, and we all share the same energy pool and we all share the same resources on this planet. And, uh, and I believe there is enough business out there for anyone. I don't believe in competition. I think of competitors as potential collaborators. Okay. If we have the same market, we have a potential collaboration there. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, so give you yeah i hope that gives you a couple of stories um you know in terms of my life coaching um i have worked with i have worked with a lot of women who have been um i'm gonna say diminished in some form um because of men in their lives um particular yeah um and I've been I've worked with a lot of women who have been traumatized. Um, I have worked with a lot of women um, who suffer with uh, addiction issues um, or, uh, you know, are being abused. Um, and um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot there. I've worked with a lot of women. I do work with a lot of women. Um, I think, I think more so it's the men I work with for technology and more the women on the life coaching. Nah, I got a women, you got a, I got a nice mix, a bag of clients, put it that way. Um, and I love what I do. You, you, you're, you're right. I'm very passionate about what I do. Yeah. I, I'm always uh, pushing the boundaries at, uh, of uh, keeping my workaholism in check, put it that way. <laughs> awesome. So yeah. I'd really like to now take some, uh, we've got about 15 minutes to go. So I've got, uh, I'd like to take questions from the audience. So I just want to uh, tell everybody that's been watching and listening to us. If you have questions uh, and you're okay to type questions, you'll see a box at the bottom that says Q and A. Uh, just click on that and type in your question and I'll take it in sequential order. Uh, if you are not able to type in the question, just raise the hand. There's an icon on the bottom somewhere to raise that. And I'll open up your mic so that you can ask your question to Trish directly. I already have a few questions when people were, had replied to my email. Uh, so I'd like to start with those to begin with. And then as the questions come in, um, we'll, we'll take them. So the first question is, um, person is asking, I'd like to have a team to support me. How do you make that happen? Well, as I got into a little bit, um, is I use apprentices, all right? First of all, Acadium uh, is, I highly recommend. And again, that's acadium100off.com. Um, but the other possibility is if you're, if, is again, if you're, if you're building a team on a budget, okay? Um, there are a number of schools across the country, whether that's Canada or US or wherever you're at, there are quite a number of schools out there that have programs that require practicum hours. So for example, let's say you're needing somebody in uh, marketing, uh, go to a school that has a marketing program, find out if they have a practicum program. 
um, if again, if there's if there's a, a type of support, if there's accounting support that you're looking for, go to an accounting school, find out if they have a practicum program. OK, um, I've been sponsoring practicum students for at various colleges um, for easily over 10, 15 years, 10, between 10 and 15 years. I got to tell you, mentoring is one of the most rewarding parts of running a business. Seeing growth in the people that are working under you, seeing the joy, uh, you know, the the whole as their confidence grows, you know, uh, it is just so rewarding to see that. Yeah. Beautiful thing. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's how I build my team. Cool. Okay. We've got another question which says, uh, do you teach your clients how to manage their own WordPress website? I think you just mentioned that. So I think the person must have asked that. Or, or do you mm -hmm. just build them yourself? That was the question. But in your case, you did the apprenticeship, right? I actually, yeah, I, I had an apprentice build a website. Um, but at the same time, um, it could go either way. If, if I have a client come to me and they want to learn WordPress, um, then what I would do is I would have a session with them once a week on the hardcore basic stuff, and they would have assignments in between. Um, now, I may involve an apprentice in doing some of that training. Um, but if they just want the website built, then I would I would delegate that to an apprentice. Yeah. Yeah. But my specialty isn't really websites. My specialty is about strategy. It's about it's because I'm I focus on entrepreneurs with disabilities. Um, my 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 keen um, passion would be really around energy energy conservation you know ways to ways to um ways to leverage the wave okay and i i teach my clients to actually ride the wave okay as opposed to a lot of people will teach you how to calm life down you know like keep it like this right well in, excuse me, but life will never be like this. Okay. So I teach people how to ride the waves. Okay. All right. And I truly believe in when life is good, take advantage, man, as they say, uh, uh, something about, I don't can't remember the expression about make hay while the sun shines. That's it. Make hay while the sun shines. Um, and, but but instead of just riding the wave and then like crashing right after the wave, I believe when you're at the peak, it is time to plan your descent. That's when it's time to plan your descent, when you're at the peak, okay? Enjoy the ride. Don't get me wrong, as long as that wave holds on you, okay? Enjoy it. But have your eye on the beach planning your descent, okay? Because if you don't plan your landing, you are going to flip upside down on the beach and your board's going to just land right on top of you if you're lucky, okay? But if you plan your descent off that wave and you plan your landing on the beach, then you will live to ride another wave, okay? And you'll be well prepared to ride another wave. You won't be recovering from the last crash. Yeah. That's very right. Okay, we have one more question. A uh, person says, I'm a person with a health condition. Is running a business even possible for me? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I want to say a big fat yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, you know, and the other piece is um, we all have to learn how to redefine success for ourselves. What looks like success for me might not have anything to do with what success looks like for you. All right. right. And, and um, for the, for the first, I'm going to say five, 10 years of my business, um, success looked like for me, it looked like, um, it looked like lots of clients. All right. But I wasn't charging anybody a heck of a lot of money because I was still getting my feet wet and I was still, and I still had some major worthiness issues. Okay. Um, but that's what success looked like for me having six clients. All right. That's what I needed to drive me forward in my growth. 
okay? But back specifically to your question about chronic illness is come see me, sweetheart, because I am, I am all about teaching you how to be, how your work and your life can be sustainable through inclusion of each other. Sustainability is where it's at. Yeah. Awesome. Great. I think uh, these are the questions we have. Um, before we sign off, I just want to make sure that <clears throat> you can tell us again about any offers that you said. One was the website. Do you want to use the chat and we can put it there and then I'll copy paste it onto the recording as well. Sure, I'll do yeah. that. Let's yeah. go to the chat window. And the first one I gave you is the discount coupon for acadium100off.com. There we go. All right, the next one was my email address. That's trish at changingpaces.com. Um, but what I'd like to offer listeners today and, and those who are listening to the replay is um, if you're interested in, I'm, I'm right now I'm in the process of developing a new um, free gift for visiting my website and joining my list. And I will put you on my waiting list um, for that is coming out in probably about three weeks. And that is definitely going to be one, it's going to be based on one of the elements of the well-being piece, okay, of the, uh, the model that, uh, that I've built for the, um, the wave effect. And um, so, yeah, so it's probably going to be a video. Um, a video, a training video. Um, so yeah, so the, the free gift is going to be the training video. And um, also, um, you, so if you reach out to me, if I get an email from you and mentioning this video, all right, I'm going to definitely send you my video. And uh, if you, um, if you actually sign up for a consultation with me, um, and you can do that here at four talk with trish.com there you go for talk with trish.com that's where you sign up for a free consultation and uh, if you do that i will i will gift you the um i will gift you the new video training video and i'll give you a downloadable copy of one of my books awesome okay. this is great so, so <clears throat> this is offers and yeah, I think that's it. Um, we've already shared the email address because the only one question I wanted to know how they can get in touch with you. You did tell me that, and we do send uh, WhatsApp to each other, but would you prefer that just email is great for the audience right now? Or should I also put in the WhatsApp number? India is very WhatsApp happy. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, my what's sure. Actually, put in my WhatsApp number. It's actually uh, 01. We're area, we're country code 01. You've got it. Beautiful. I got it. I got it. I, I've also pasted it. There also, one other thing is that I was pasting whatever you posted on the chat because I think by default you were posting it only to the <clears throat> panelists and they were not getting a copy of it. So I'm just re ah, copy pasting okay. whatever you're putting. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, thank you. So yeah, no, but I'll put all of this down in the recording as well because I'll be sending everybody a follow-up email. But Trish, it's been awesome chatting with you. Really, really great you to too. hear your story. And hopefully, hopefully we do more such conversations like this in the future after your your workshops are done. Maybe I look forward to it. Else. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, well, what we'll do is we'll get together again after my retreat and before the group program starts. We'll promote the group program then. Yes, sharing the 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 learnings from the from the uh, retreat. Yeah, that could be the second uh, Zoom session that we could do. But Absolutely. anyway, thank you so much once again, and everybody, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next webinar. Bye bye.